Okie dokie, now we actually get into parts or anatomy of the nervous system and peripheral nervous system. All right, what do you see here? What's the first thing you see? Do you see good or do you see evil? <laughs> kind of crazy, right? Do you see good or do you see evil? All right, so the human nervous system, the ability to balance like an acrobat, combines functions throughout the nervous system. The central and peripheral divisions coordinate control of the body using the senses of balance, body position, and touch, and soles of the feet. So early on, uh, early embryonic development of the nervous system, the neuroectoderm begins to fold inward to form the neural groove. So right in here. As the two sides of the neural groove converge, they form this neural tube, which lies beneath the ectoderm. The anterior end of the neural tube will develop into the brain, and the posterior portion will become the spinal cord. So can you imagine that? Just from <clears throat> these little cell layers to this tube, this is what makes the entire nervous system. This is the start, right? Crazy. Uh, at 19 days, this is what the notochord looks like. Here's what the ecto, that's 19 days. 20 days, that's the neural fold. 22 days, and then at 26 days, the neural tube is formed. This is why I can't stress this enough. The first trimester, the first month of a child, if you're planning on getting pregnant, you must take care of yourself the first month, the first trimester. So in the third week, first embryonic trace of central nervous system, the neural plate, the sink, the neural groove with neural flows. The fourth week, after a month, you get anterior dilations of the forebrain, the midbrain, and the hindbrain. The fifth week, you get five secondary vesicles, such as the forebrain, the telencephalon, the diencephalon, the midbrain, the mesencephalon, the hindbrain, the metencephalon, and the myencephalon. So this is all within the first five weeks. So if you look at that four weeks, this is what you look like. You look weird looking kid, right? <laughs> and five weeks, here we go. But those are the telencephalon, diencephalon, mesencephalon, and then eventually fully developed brain goes from here to this. So this is where the telencephalon was. That's the yellow. That's the diencephalon. That's right there. Okay. That's the mesencephalon, that's right in there. The pons is the myelencephalon here, and the spinal cord is down here. So that, from four weeks, develops to this in full month term, 36 weeks. Okay, it could be uh, sooner, 32 weeks if you develop, deliver early, but that's how long it takes. Now, remember how we talked about last time is the brain starts to imaginate fold on itself to increase the surface area otherwise if it continued to grow then you'd have a head the size of a hot air balloon all right primary and secondary vesicle stages here's the proencephalon which is the forebrain mesencephalon which is the midbrain rhombencephalon which is the hindbrain then that turns into the telencephalon and the diencephalon and that becomes the cerebrum. This becomes the thalamus, the hypothalamus, the epithalamus. This becomes the midbrain. Mencephalon becomes the pons and the cerebellum. And the myencephalon becomes the medulla oblongata. <laughs> um, what are some things that can go wrong? Um, if the mother forgets to take folic acid during her pregnancy, uh, our child can develop spina bifida which is where the vertebrae fail to close and close the spinal cord. Uh, spina bifida occulta is one to a few vertebrae. They usually don't have any functional problems. Uh, spina bifida cystica is more severe. The sac protrudes from the spine. Microcephaly is a small brain, and anencephaly is unfortunately no brain. And here's what spina bifida is a birth defect of the spinal cord caused when the neural tube does not completely close but the rest of the development continues. The result is the emergence of meninges and the neural tissue through the vertebral column. It's very sad. Now the human neural axis, the mammalian nervous system is ranged with the neural tube running along an anterior to posterior axis from nose to tail for a four-legged animal like a dog. Humans as two-legged animals have a bend in the neural axis right here. 
between the brain stem and the diencephalon along with the bend in the neck so that the eyes and the face are oriented forward. So obviously we're not quadrupeds. So you see the brain, when we did the sheep brain dissection, you saw that the, the spinal cord was protruded posteriorly, but on humans, it's going to go inferiorly. The cerebrum is a large component of the central nervous system in humans and the most obvious aspect of its folded surface called the cerebral cortex. Here's the cerebrum, right hemisphere, left hemisphere. Here's a longitudinal fissure. Hippocrates, men ought to know that from the brain and from the brain alone arises our pleasures, joy, laughter, and jests, as well as our sorrows, pains, griefs, and tears. Through it, in particular, we think, see, hear, and distinguish the ugly from the beautiful, the bad from the good, and the pleasant from the unpleasant. That's all those thoughts are from your brain, right? Now, the, the beauty is, if you can control all these thoughts, then you're going to live a happy life. If you let uh, the pains, griefs, and tears overpower you, and the sorrows, if you're a uh, Debbie Downer all the time, well, then that's not very fun either, okay? So let's look at the major landmarks. Cerebrum is 83% volume. You have two hemispheres, the left and the right. The gyri are the folds. The sulci are the grooves. Longitudinal cerebral fissure. Big sulcus between the hemispheres. The cerebellum is 10% volume, but it has 50% of the neurons. So this is balance and coordination. Uh, the brainstem has the smallest volume, but it's the most crucial for survival. Heart rate, regulation, homeostasis, uh, uh, all on the brainstem. Uh, here's the frontal lobe. Here's the parietal lobe. Here's the occipital lobe. So the frontal lobe does cognition. This does motor. Parietal lobe does sensory information, processing. Occipital lobe does vision. And the temporal lobe here does hearing. Again, here's the frontal lobe, here's the central sulcus, the parietal lobe, the occipital lobe, the temporal lobe. If you look at the inside, then you have the corpus callosum, which connects the right and left hemispheres. You have the thalamus, which is a relay center, like air traffic control. Hypothalamus, that does homeostasis. Optic chiasma that optic tract will start posterior to that and prior to that would be your optic nerve your pituitary gland that releases hormones your midbrain that's essential for survival pons medulla oblongata here's the parietal lobe occipital lobe okay the pineal gland that does your circadian rhythm and your fourth ventricle. This is, these ventricles are there for cerebral spinal fluid. Okay, and then there's the cerebellum. So when you did the the sheep brain dissection, you were able to see all those structures. There's the cingulate gyrus. Here's the corpus callosum, pineal gland, occipital lobe, uh, fourth ventricle, cerebellum, medulla oblongata, pons, midbrain hypothalamus and the thalamus so gray matter uh, when you did the dissections you saw the gray matter outer part of the cerebrum and the cerebellum as well as the deep nuclei you have neurosomas dendrites and synapses you have white matter which is deep in the brain those are all your tracts bundles of myelinated so remember white matter is myelinated and gray matter is not myelinated uh, you have three layers meninges you saw that on the brain. So the dura matter is called tough mother, really. It's the tough outer layer. There's the dura matter. Arachnoid matter is transparent middle layer. Looks like saran wrap. And the pia matter is a very delicate inner layer. Pia meaning soft. Now the dura matter within the cranium, the dura has two layers, the periosteal layer and the meningeal layer. 
In some places, the layers separate to form dural sinuses. We have the superior sagittal sinus and the transverse sinus. Sinuses are openings. In some places, dural sheets occupy spaces separating major parts of the brain. That's the falx cerebri between the hemispheres and the tenatorium cerebelli between the cerebellum and the cerebrum. Okay. Now, <clears throat> when you get inflammation, remember itis is inflammation meningitis that's inflammation of the meninges infants and childhood uh, bacteria virus through the nose and throat uh, pn arachnoid uh, layers are affected uh, what are the symptoms swelling of the brain cerebral bleeds possible death um, you can get high fever stiff neck drowsiness vomiting and headaches okay. now uh, ventricles are interesting because a lot of times students have a, a difficult time understanding this concept. But ventricles are a open space. And within these ventricles, you have cerebral spinal fluid that circulates through the brain. And cerebral spinal fluid is basically this fluid that your brain kind of soaks in. Okay, inside your skull, it, has, it bathes in cerebral spinal fluid. But cerebral spinal fluid also helps take up toxins, helps bring nutrition to that area. So you have two lateral ventricles. Uh, generally, the right uh, uh, ventricle is ventricle number one. The left ventricle is ventricle number two. Then you have the third ventricle, which is right here, this little uh, beak. And then you have the fourth ventricle right here, which is like the tail. Okay. So what is cerebral spinal fluid? It's a clear colorless liquid you make about 500 milliliters per day it's produced by the chlor choroid plexus within the ventricles it flows within the ventricles canals and in subarachnoid space around central nervous system it's absorbed by the arachnoid granulations into the blood of superior sagittal sinus it provides buoyancy um, about 1500 grams um, but 50 grams in cerebral spinal fluid think water Right, so your brain weighs about 1500 grams, but when it bathes in cerebral spinal fluid, it only weighs around 50 grams. So it protects you from shaken child syndrome, protects you from concussions, um, chemical stability, it rinses metabolic waste. Are you a genius? Uh, you had to think about that, right? So here's the top 10 signs. I'll start out with the five. Um, Number 10, realize that you don't know everything. Uh, you wear the same clothes every day. Uh, number eight, you can feel what others are feeling. You have very good empathy. You feel sad when others are hurt. Uh, you perfectly control yourself or your emotions. You know what? Like someone owes you money, you don't care. You know, you can pay them now or they get paid later. You you know that they're, gonna, they're good for it. Otherwise, you wouldn't have lent them money, right? Um, you have blue eyes, actually. Uh, um, those that have blue eyes, long-term geniuses, brown eyes, your immediate geniuses. And then if you love chocolate. So number one, the flow of cerebral spinal fluid. Cerebral spinal fluid is secreted by this chlor choroid plexus right here. Then CSF flows through the interventricular foramen into the third ventricle. Then it goes, the choroid plexus in the third ventricle adds more cerebral spinal fluid. Then cerebral spinal fluid goes down the cerebral aqueduct into the fourth ventricle. The cord plexus in the fourth ventricle adds more cerebral spinal fluid. Cerebral spinal flows out of the two lateral apertures of one. So it flows out here now. Now the cerebral spinal fills the subarachnoid space right in here and bathes the external surfaces of the brain and spinal cord right around here. So this is where you get the buoyancy and your brain just sits in this little mesh or of water. At arachnoid granulation, CSF is reabsorbed into the venous blood of the dural sinuses. Okay. And then there's the cerebral spinal fluid circulation, the cord plexus. Now, let's talk about the blood-brain barrier. The brain is only 2% of the body weight, but receives 15 to 20% of blood and uses 20% of oxygen and glucose. In babies, it uses 50%. Okay. Now, the blood-brain barrier, BBB, it's, uh, they're tight junctions. Uh, they're seals, capillaries, and brain tissue. Um, they are only permeable to substances that are small, such as alcohol, caffeine, nicotine, anesthetics. 
but it's not permeable to antibiotics. You don't get high off antibiotics or cancer drugs. Now the blood cerebral spinal flood barrier, it's it seals choroid plexus within the brain ventricles. It also has tight junctions between the ependymal cells. And then you have circumventricular organs, CVOs. They're regions of the third and fourth ventricles that lack the blood brain barrier and they allow the brain to monitor the blood chemistry. So if something is off, then those CVOs can regulate it better. The medulla oblongata, yeah, that develops from the myencephalon, extends from the frame and magnet to the pons. Uh, very important because this is what it does. It's the cardiac center, so it sets the rate and force of your heart rate. The vasomotor center, it regulates blood pressure. The respiratory center, the rate and depth of breathing. Also speech, sneezing, salivation, swallowing, vomiting, and sweating is all controlled at the medulla oblongata. Anterior surface bulges, pyramids, medial, and olives are lateral. Okay, so this is very important, the medulla oblongata. Uh, you have internal structures, cortical spinal tracts, pyramidal dissociation. It has inferior olivary nucleus. Um, it has the tectospinal tract, the posterior spinal cerebral tract, the fourth ventricle, and cranial nerves. 8, 9, 10, 11 are near the medulla oblongata. Here's the brain stem. Okay, the brain stem has the thalamus here. Here's the cerebral peduncles. Here's the pons. Here's the medulla oblongata right here. Brain stem comprises of three regions, the midbrain, the pons, and the medulla. What does the pons do? It develops from the metencephalon. It causes a large bulge. The posterior aspect has these little peduncles that attach to the cerebellum. Internally contains parts of several tracts, uh, medial lemniscus, tectospinal tract, anterolateral system, anterospinal cerebral tract. You're thinking, Patel, what do all these tracts do? Uh, we'll talk about those a little bit later, but just keep an eye on those tracts. Uh, those tracts give sensory and motor information up and down the spinal cord and the brain. And cranial nerves 5, 6, 7, and 8 are near the pons. All right, what do you see? Do you see two Batman or do you see Wolverine? Interesting.